Somewhere between the front bumper bar and the brake lights of any automobile is that marvel of modern engineering, the internal combustion engine. Keeping it in peak operating condition is very much the secret of how much you'll enjoy your classic. The problem is that a breakdown is not easily solved in an engine that may be more than 60 or 70 years old. You can't just duck down to your local Repco or spare parts supplier and get those vital bits that will bring it back to its peak performance. At Melbourne's Historic and Vintage Restorations, they overcome this problem by having the machinery and the people with the skills to make virtually any part. Well, right, yeah, well, we can basically these days make anything um, because the cars have now reached a, a point where there's a certain value, so there's, there's worth spending the money on them to get the return. The other thing is, of course, that um, a lot of the components have passed their use-by date in a big way. For instance, crankshafts. Um, a lot of the... N nine times out of ten, the crankshafts, when we crack test them, are cracked, so you can't use them. If you're 70 years old or, or older, and generally the sports cars, of course, they've had a very, very hard life, so... Um, and the materials from the 20s and 30s were not as good at, in terms of quality control. The workmanship was very good, the design was very good, but the materials that were available in those days are not as good as the materials that are available now. So, for instance, um, aluminium was, was uh, uh, porous, uh, and over the years it's full of uh, oil, it cracks, it, it you know, loses its integrity. Uh, cast iron, of course, corrodes away. And then a lot of the reciprocating components crack and break. So, you know, you're faced with, with all that. And it wasn't just the materials used in bygone days that pose huge challenges for today's restorers. Some of the manufacturing processes, while cutting edge in their time, present almost insurmountable hurdles to duplicate today. Uh, we're in the process of making blocks for 1925 twin can sunbeams, and that's a big challenge because they're a monoblock engine. And a Sunbeam 3-litre twin cam was a, a sports car made in the mid-20s, mid 24 and 25, by the Sunbeam company. Um, they produced the car to race. Um, one of the cars that we restored was uh, actually a team car that raced in the 1924 uh, Le Mans race and came second. They were a very advanced twin cam um, engine. Unfortunately, over the years, of course, the blocks have succumbed to uh, the, the use they've had, and also that originally they were very complex, or still are, a very complex um, casting, and the original castings weren't 100%. Each engine was individually machined and individually assembled. So, for instance, the, 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 the block crankcase, uh, camshafts, cam covers, and all the aluminium covers only fit that engine that it was made for. What must have seemed like a great idea at the time to the Sunbeam engineers, casting the block and the twin cam head in one unit, is today a nightmare to try to recreate. In the 1920s, materials were expensive, but labour was cheap. Today, it's the exact opposite, which is what makes restoring classic cars such an expensive business. And that's without the challenge of finding people with the skills to reproduce an item that, even in its day, was unusual. We've got four engines that we've been working on and none of the, the actual components are interchangeable from one engine to the other because the different studs have been drilled in different spots and they actually were handmade. So it's a real challenge. There's, there's hundreds of hours to go into finishing one of these. Two things occur to me. Yeah. The first is... It must be a real challenge to find somebody that has the skill to do the machining. Absolutely, yeah. And you've got a good man there? Yeah, we've got, we've got someone that's extremely patient, um, <laughs> very patient, who's actually done two of these. So we've, we've actually produced two of these uh, and there's, there's several more to be done.
Yeah. And the second thing that occurs to me is um, if you're thinking about restoring a classic, beware of the 1924 Sunbeam <laughs> twin cam. Absolutely. Because this can't be a cheap job. It can't be a cheap job. And I guess that's, that's a warning for, for, for lots of other cars as well. I mean, if you can find the, the original components, you're right. If you can find the spare parts, you're right. But if they're not available, um, without, um, without the major components being in good order, you've got a problem. Just in round figures, round dollar terms, what's it cost to recreate a 1924 twin overhead cam Sunbeam motor? Oh, probably in excess of $100,000. So while you certainly need deep pockets to put a 1924 Sunbeam twin cam back on the road, there are any number of other classics, veterans, vintage and PVTs that are within the budget of the average enthusiast. And it's good to know that if push comes to shove, there are people around like HVR who understand the passion of enthusiasts and have the skills to help. Um, just to give you an idea of the variety of things that, that, that uh, happen, um, that's a 600 MG cylinder head being re ready here for reconditioning. Uh, a crown wheel and pinion being fitted up for an Alvis. And over here we have two crankshafts that, that Peter's um, finished off for MGs, they're new, new crankshafts, six cylinder MG, six cylinder MG head um, in the process of being built. Uh, Pete's working on a Lancia Aurelia head which he's assembling. Uh, he's got an Alpha gearbox which we're making new gears for. He's got MG generators which he's rebuilding. Um, making from scratch, special generators. Um, apart from that, he hasn't got much else to do, have you, Pete? Um, what else have you got Quite down weak, there? Pete. Quite weak, yeah. Um, wrapped up in there are new Alpha camshafts, which Pete's designed as well um, for, for our next lot of Alpha MGs, uh, 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 Alphas. Pete actually um, machines the billets up and then he uh, designs his own uh, uh, camshaft timing and then uh, we, we have the, the timing put on by a specialist. But it's all to, a, to our own uh, specifications. In the same way that those who rejuvenate and refurbish great paintings and sculptures, so the team at Historic and Vintage make replacement parts that are in every way as close as possible to the originals. The end result is that masterpieces of the automotive world are given a new lease of life. That may mean that they can be raced again or just continue to run smoothly and be an ongoing pleasure for those who own them.